Hello everyone, happy First Chapter Friday. This is Mrs. Moss. Today I am reading The Good Earth by Pearl S. Buck. This is one of my favorite books and so I have a hard copy of it. I actually have numerous copies of The Good Earth. However, it is in the public domain so you can access it for free online. The Good Earth um, won the Nobel Prize and so it is, um, on the front it says, the classic novel of pre-revolutionary China by the Nobel Prize winning author. And so the first chapter of The Good Earth is um, our main character on his wedding day. And so, without any more background, chapter one of The Good Earth. It was Wang Long's marriage day. At first, opening his eyes in the blackness of the curtains about his bed, he could not think why the dawn seemed different from any other. The house was still except for the faint, gasping cough of his old father, whose room was opposite to his own across the middle room. Every morning, the old man's cough was the first sound to be heard. Wang Lung usually lay listening to it and moved only when he heard it approaching nearer and when he heard the door of his father's room squeak upon its wooden hinges. But this morning, he did not wait. He sprang up and pushed aside the curtains of his bed. It was a dark, ruddy dawn, and through a small square hole of a window where the tattered paper fluttered, a glimpse of bronze sky gleamed. He went to the hole and tore the paper away. It is spring and I do not need this, he muttered. He was ashamed to say aloud that he wished the house to look neat on this day. The hole was barely large enough to admit his hand and he thrust it out to feel of the air. A small soft wind blew gently from the east, a wild, oh, excuse me, a wind mild and murmurous and full of rain. It was a good omen. The fields need a rain for fruition. There would be no rain this day, but within a few days, if this wind continued, there would be water. It was good. Yesterday, he had said to his father that if this brazen, glittering sunshine continued, the wheat could not fill in the ear. Now it's as if heaven had chosen this day to wish him well. Earth would bear fruit. He hurried out into the middle room, drawing on his blue outer trousers as he went and nodding about the fullness at his waist, his girdle of blue cotton cloth. He left his upper body bare until he had heated water to bathe himself. He went into the shed, which was the kitchen, leaning against the house, and out of its dusk, an ox twisted its head from behind the corner next the door and lowed at him deeply. The kitchen was made of earth and bricks as the house was, great squares of earth dug from their own fields and thatched with straw from their own wheat. Out of their own earth had his grandfather and his youth fashioned also the oven baked in black with many years of meal preparing. On top of this earthen structure stood a deep round iron cauldron. This cauldron he filled partly full of water, dipping it with a half gourd from an earthen jar that stood near, but he dipped cautiously for water was precious. Then, after a hesitation, he suddenly lifted the jar and emptied all the water into the cauldron. This day, he would bathe his whole body. Not since he was a child upon his mother's knee had anyone looked upon his body. Today, one would, and he would have it clean. He went around the oven to the rear, and selecting a handful of the dry grass and stalks standing in the corner of the kitchen, he arranged it delicately in the mouth of the oven, making the most of every leaf. Then, from an old flint and iron, he caught a flame and thrust it into the straw, and there was a blaze. This was the last morning he would have to light the fire. He had lit it every morning since his mother died six years before. He had lit the fire, boiled water, and poured the water into a bowl and taken it into the room where his father sat upon his bed, coughing and fumbling for his shoes upon the floor. Every morning for these six years, the old man had waited for his son to bring in hot water to ease him of his morning coughing. Now father and son could rest. There was a woman coming to the house. Never again would Wang Lang have to rise summer and winter at dawn to light the fire. He could lie in his bed and wait, and he would also have a bowl of water brought to him. And if the earth were fruitful, there would be tea leaves in the water. Once in some years, it was so. And if the woman wearied, there would be her children to light the fire, the many children she would bear to Wang Lung. Wang Lung stopped, struck by the thought of children running in and out of their three rooms. Three rooms had always seemed much to them. A house half empty since his mother died. They were always having to re resist relatives who were more crowded. His uncle with his endless brood of children coaxing. Now, how can two lone men need so much room? Cannot father and son sleep together? The warmth of the young one's body will comfort the old one's cough. 
But the father always replied, I am saving my bed for my grandson. He will warm my bones in my age. Now the grandsons were coming, grandsons upon grandsons. They would have to put beds along the walls and in the middle room. The house would be full of beds. The blaze in the oven died down while Wang Lung thought of all the beds there would be in the half-empty house. The water began to chill in the cauldron. The shadowy figure of the old man appeared in the doorway, holding his unbuttoned garments about him. He was coughing and spitting, and he gasped. How is it that there is not water yet to heat my lungs? Wang Lung stared and recalled himself and was ashamed. This fuel is damp, he muttered from behind the stove, the damp wind. The old man continued to cough perse perseveringly and would not cease until the water boiled. Wang Lung dipped some into a bowl and then after a moment, he opened a glazed jar that stood upon a ledge of the stove and took from it a dozen or so of the curled dried leaves and sprinkled them upon the surface of the water. The old man's eyes opened greedily and immediately he began to complain. Why are you wasteful? Tea is like eating silver. It is the day, replied Wang Lung with a short laugh. Eat and be comforted. The old man grasped the bowl in his shriveled, knotty fingers, muttering, uttering little grunts. He watched the leaves uncurl and spread upon the surface of the water, unable to bear drinking the precious stuff. It will be cold, said Wang Lung. True, true, said the old man in alarm, and he began to take great gulps of the hot tea. He passed into an animal satisfaction like a child fixed upon its feeding, but he was not too forgetful to see Wang Lung dipping the water recklessly from the cauldron into a deep wooden tub. He lifted his head and stared at his son. Now there is water enough to bring a crop to fruit, he said suddenly. Wang Lung continued to dip the water to the last drop. He did not answer. Now then, cried his father loudly, I have not washed my body all at once since the new year, said Wang Lung in a low voice. He was ashamed to say to his father that he wished his body to be clean for a woman to see. He hurried out, carrying the tub to his own room. The door was hung loosely upon a warped wooden frame, and it did not shut closely, and the old man tottered into the middle room and put his mouth to the opening and bawled. It will be ill if we start the woman like this. Tea in the morning, water, and all this washing. It is only one day, shouted Wang Lung, and then he added, I will throw the water on the earth when I am finished, and it is not all waste. The old man was silent at this, and Wang Lung unfastened his girdle and stepped out of his clothing. In the light that streamed in a square block from the hole, he wrung a small towel from the steaming water and he scrubbed his dark, slender body vigorously. Warm though he had thought the air, when his flesh was wet, he was cold, and he moved quickly, passing the towel in and out of the water until from his whole body there went up a delicate cloud of steam. Then he went to a box that had been his mother's and drew from it a fresh suit of blue cotton cloth. He might be a little cold this day without the wadding of the winter garments, but he suddenly could not bear to put them on against his clean flesh. The covering of them was torn and filthy and the wadding stuck out of the holes gray and sodden. He did not want this woman to see him for the first time with the wadding sticking out of his clothes. Later, she would have to wash and mend, but not the first day. He drew over the blue cotton coat and trousers, a long robe made of the same material, his one long robe, which he wore on feast days only, 10 days or so in the year, all told. Then with swift fingers, he unplated the long braid of his hair that hung down his back and taking a wooden comb from the drawer of the small unsteady table, he began to comb out his hair. His father drew near again and put his mouth to the crack of the door. Am I to have nothing to eat this day, he complained. At my age, the bones are water in the morning until food is given them. I am coming, said Wang Long, braiding his hair quickly and smoothly and weaving into the strands a tasseled black silk cord. Then after a moment, he removed his long gown and wound his braid about his head and went out, carrying the tub of water. He had quite forgotten the breakfast. He would stir a little water into cornmeal and give it to his father. For himself, he could not eat. He staggered with the tub to the threshold and poured the water upon the earth nearest the door, and as he did so, he remembered he had used all the water in the cauldron for his bathing, and he'd have to start the fire again. A wave of anger passed over him at his father. That old head thinks of nothing except his eating and his drinking, he muttered into the mouth of the oven, but aloud he said nothing. It was the last morning he would have to prepare food for the old man. He put very little water into the cauldron, drawing it in a bucket from the well near the door, and it boiled quickly and he stirred meal together and took it to the old man. We will have rice this night, my father, he said. Meanwhile, here is corn. 
There's only a little rice left in the basket, said the old man, seating himself at the table in the middle room and stirring with his chopsticks the thick yellow gruel. We'll eat a little less than at the spring festival, said Wang Lung. <sighs> but the old man did not hear. He was supping loudly at his bowl. Wang Lung went into his room then and drew about him against the long blue robe and let down the braid of his hair. He passed his hand over his shaven brow and over his cheeks. Perhaps he had better be newly shaven. It was scarcely sunrise yet. He could pass through the street of the barbers and be shaved before he went to the house where the woman waited for him. If he had the money, he would do it. And so that is the first seven pages of The Good Earth by Pearl S. Buck. And so at the end of our first chapter, our main character is married. Um, and he is, as you can guess, not very wealthy. But as the book continues, he continues to gather earth, land, and build quite a um, reputation for himself. And his relationships change, and he has all of these trials. And then at the end, um, he's an old man, and it's the ending is very um, heartening. Um, and in a way, a little bit disappointing because of what his children decide. And so that was The Good Earth by Pearl S. Buck. I hope you are all well, and thanks for coming to First Chapter Friday.